Okay, now we want to jump over to another one, and this time we're going to go to Solomon. David has a son named Solomon, and we want to switch over here. You'll notice that I kind of put bubbly bubblies around it. This is Solomon. Solomon's, uh, how should I say, this is the bubbly time of the kingdom. Things are good, going well. <coughs> First Kings, chapters 1 to 11, is a story of Solomon. I, you guys call him Solomon. I call him, his real name is Shlomo. Shlomo, but if you say Shlomo, somebody thinks you're doing something bad. So Shlomo. Shlomo, why is, when you hear the word Shlomo, which is his real name, Shlomo, what, what word do you hear? You should know the Hebrew word Shlomo. Shalom. Solomon's name means Shalom, peace. Solomon is a man of peace. Why was David not allowed to build the temple? We didn't read Chronicles, but Chronicles tells us that David was a man of blood. David was a man of blood, and God says, David, you can't build my temple. Now, David saved up all sorts of gold and silver for Solomon. So David bought the threshing floor of Aravna. David set up uh, a whole bunch of stuff and saved up stuff for Solomon. So David made these great provisions so that Solomon could build the temple. Solomon was also wealthy himself. This period of Sol Saul, David, and Solomon is called the United Monarchy. This is when Israel is all united together as one under Saul. And then David, David's date is 1000 BC. In this course, we've got to learn about four dates, okay? Actually, five. David's 1000, right? When's, does anybody remember when Abraham was? Yeah, Abraham's 2000, David's 1000. And, and then Solomon comes 40 years after him. And Solomon is David's son. Shlomo is David's son. So these three kings ruled over united Israel. Israel north and south had not split. Now, once Solomon comes, what happens there? Solomon does some nasty stuff at the end of his life, and the kingdom's going to split north and south. And so you'll have Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The kingdom will actually split north and south. So let's talk about Solomon and this transition of power. In 1 Kings chapter 1, this is where we begin to see Adonijah's bid for the throne. Adonijah was Solomon's brother. And um, actually, you get the statement about Adonijah. Now, Adonijah, whose mother was Hagit, put himself forward and said, I will be king. So he got chariots and horses ready, and about 50 men to run ahead of him. And then it makes this comment about David. His father never interfered with him by asking, why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born next to Absalom. Does it help to be handsome if you're going to be king? Does it help to be handsome if you're going to be king? That's why Newt Gingrich is not going to get this thing. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway, uh, but anyway, does it help to be... And so it points out that this guy is really handsome. This guy is really handsome and stuff. And it says, his father never interfered with him. Is one of the roles of a father to discipline his child? Is one of the roles of a father to discipline his children? And it says, David never asked him, what are you, why are you doing that? And David never really interfered with him and disciplined this child. And so basically, let me set this up too. Okay, you guys are going to be the city of David. You're going to be the city of David. This is Jerusalem. You guys over here are Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives is about 2,700 feet high. It's, it's higher, actually, than the city of Jerusalem. And so this is a big city, Mount of Olives, over here. There's a valley that goes, the Kidron Valley, that goes between Mount of Olives and the city of David. It comes down here and then turns this way down to the Dead Sea. There's another valley over here, the Central Valley comes over, and there's a valley over there that's called the Hinnom Valley, comes over and then goes down to the Dead Sea. Now, there's two springs. One spring is here. It's called Ain Rogel. Ain means spring of Rogel. So Adonijah comes from Jerusalem, and he hauls with his boys, he gets his chariots, and he comes down here to Ain Rogel, and he's going to announce himself king down here at this spring. David takes Solomon, and you guys know where the other spring is. The other spring is right there, and it's closer to the city. Do you see? You guys are the city. The, the other spring is right there. It's the Gihon Spring, and you guys walk through it. Does anybody remember Hezekiah's Tunnel? Hezekiah's tunnel and the Get Lost in Jerusalem program, that's right there. So what happens is David's going to announce Solomon right next to the city, and Solomon's going to be announced, Adonijah's going to be here more outside the city. So Solomon will kind of, the geography of it works in Solomon's favor. But now let's see what happens. Um, first of all, David doesn't know what's going on. Is David in 1 Kings 1, is David out of it? 
He's an old man. He's so old that he can't get heat. So they find this woman, Abishag, who's this beautiful, gorgeous young woman. She sleeps with David, not to have sex with her, but, but, but basically to keep him warm. Okay, to keep him warm. So Abishag sleeps with David. David David is so out of it. So what happens is Nathan goes to Bathsheba and says, Bathsheba, didn't David say that Solomon should be the next king? And Bathsheba says, yeah, David. Well, Adonijah's down here making himself king. So Bathsheba and Nathan make this plot. David's kind of an old man in bed, sick, kind of that kind of thing. And so they make a plot. And, and Bathsheba and things go on and talk to David and to make, um, basically to make a thing for Solomon. Uh, and so in chapter 1, let me read verse 31. It says, And Bathsheba bowed low her face to the ground, kneeling before the king, and said, May my lord, the king David, live forever. David said, Call Zadok and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and Judah and stuff, and take my own mule. Get my own mule, his royal mule. So he's going to put Solomon on his royal mule. You ride the royal mule into the city, and does that mean you're a king? You ride the royal mule into the city, and does that mean you're a king? Tell me about another king who's going to ride a mule into the city and be a king. Yeah, Jesus in the triumphal entry. When Jesus enters, he enters on a, on, the, on, a, on a donkey, and the people are all saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, and things. So anyways, Solomon's going to ride this donkey, and then he's riding the king's royal mule, and Solomon uh, is then pronounced king, Bathsheba. Sol Solomon is Bathsheba's son. Now, what happens? As I've studied 1 Kings 1 to 11, I'm really into Solomon, okay? You know, I teach the whole Bible and stuff like that, but Solomon, actually Proverbs, I've studied Proverbs for like 30 years. Proverbs is really my area of expertise. And I've studied Solomon a lot. And it has bothered me over and over again, and I'm finally talking about it. Um, in the 1 Kings 1 to 11, Solomon rarely speaks Solomon himself rarely speaks, except when he's speaking at official ease. He's speaking as the king or something like that. So what happens, is, and I noticed this, and it has bothered me for years, actually. When you read about David, do you learn about David's heart? When you read the stories about David and Jonathan, do you read about David's heart? When you read the Psalms, do you learn about David's heart? You study David for a while, and I feel like a I know this guy, David, really well because I, I, I've seen his heart. I've seen his ups and his downs, and I've seen him, the way he's reacted to things and things. With Solomon, I've studied him more than I've studied David, but I don't feel like I know Solomon. It's like, where's Solomon? He, he never really speaks much in the narrative. It's always other people speaking about him. And when he does speak, it's always he's speaking and praying as the king and not, not personal, you know, kind of things. And so this bothers me, and I want to come back to this later then. Why is it that Solomon is so far out of the narrative? As a matter of fact, when Solomon is made king, does Solomon do any of this plotting? Does Solomon plot to become king himself? No. All the plotting is done by Nathan and Bathsheba and these other guys. Solomon is put on the royal donkey. It's not like he's saying, hey, I want to be king. I'm going to go get on the royal donkey. Other people put him on the donkey. So Solomon is really this... Uh, I don't know, not a go-getter kind of character where his heart's out, he's wearing his heart on his sleeve or anything. And that bothers me, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. 